Hey guys, what's going on? Clint here. Today we're going to be working on some of the fuel system under the car. I already put some heat insulation under where the fuel cooler is going to go, and I started to reattach some of the fuel lines. We're going to get the fuel tank in today, hopefully, so let's check it out. Okay guys, so right in here is where the fuel cooler is going to sit. I put some of this heat shielding adhesive stuff on there just to see if that'll maybe help. Not that it ever really got too hot or anything. But right here, you can see I got to attach the fuel lines again. These little clips here screw on. They're not a push on or anything. Uh, these are the stock ones. I didn't pick up any new ones, but they should do just fine. We'll see uh, how it turns out, but it shouldn't be too complicated of a process. And then we'll see if we can get the fuel tank on relatively soon. All right, guys, I got the fuel tank here. As you can see, I went through and put some of this heat shielding adhesive on. Uh, this is going to be the hot side that runs next to the exhaust. This is the driver's side here. These things are specific, guys. The driver's side here is a little bit of a longer angle, whereas the passenger side is a little bit steeper, and they will not work for either one. They are specific to their side. Um, but like I said, I'll be posting the part numbers and everything for any information anybody needs. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Hey guys, Clint here. As you can tell, it's the next day. We ran into a little bit of a snag with the fuel system. It turns out that the hard fuel lines that I have, the connectors aren't really staying locked in place. So we had to go with some new line. We've got some Gates Barricade 5 sixteenths hose. I believe it's good for 50 PSI. This is not a high pressure system, so this will be more than enough. And we're gonna mark the return side with blue electrical tape. That way we just know which one is which. We're going to run it from the fuel tank up to the fuel filter and then from the fuel filter down to the fuel cooler and then the fuel cooler up to the fuel tank. So stick around and we'll get that taken care of. All right, guys, I'm up in the engine bay right now. This blue line is our return line. That's just held on with this little metal clip. The supply line has the actual factory fitting here. So I'm going to need my uh, fuel hose tool pliers to get this off of there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to zip tie that new hose to this line and just drag it through. That's going to be our shorter of the two, and this one's going to be the longer of the two, so I'm going to wait until after I get this one done to get that one taken care of. But you can see they clip into this little area here, and then they run behind the fender, move that stuff, over here, and then the fuel filter will sit right about here. So we're just going to run the lines directly to that. But yeah, it should be relatively easy. Okay, guys, as you can see, I uh, cut that little braided um, nylon, excuse me, mesh kind of holding these two lines together. Um, do be careful with that. I did get poked. It does get kind of sharp. It's probably just because it's 20 years old, but now we should be free to go ahead and pull this guy. We're going to pull our supply line roughly to where it should just reach. And I'll double check with like a rough guess. Give myself a bit extra. I think that right about there should be more than enough. And now I can go ahead, climb back up to the engine bay, disconnect the hard line from the new rubber hose line, and then we'll uh, repeat this process with the blue return line. So I'll see you guys in just a second. All right, guys, I got the rubber hose connected to the return line up in the engine bay. I'm going to just slowly pull on this. I'm sure that we're going to get some more diesel fuel coming out. And we'll see uh, how this does. There seems to be a bunch of crap up in this frame rail. And there was quite a bit of diesel left in that. But that should be all we need for this side. So we'll go ahead and check and make sure that we have enough up top. And it looks like we'll have more than enough to go to the fuel filter. And then we're going to run our fuel cooler to tank side for the return. So stick around and we'll get that taken care of as soon as I can.
Okay, guys, as you can see right over here, I've got the lines connected to the fuel cooler. And I know they're kind of blocked by the main supply line, but you can see the one I marked with the blue tape and zip ties. Those are going to come all the way back to here where the fuel tank is going to reside. And then once I get my new fuel pump in, we're going to go ahead and attach those. We can do that while it's in the car. That's not really a big deal. So I just wanted to show you guys where I had to run them. These aren't connected hard anywhere. Um, we're going to have to figure out some kind of mounting to hold them in place. Um, these little plastic clip-on lines are just not really uh, going to hold these rubber hoses. So I'm going to have to look into something else. Um, but whatever I figure out, obviously, I'll let you guys know. And hopefully here soon I'll be able to get this fuel tank in. And then we should be able to start working on the rear axle. Because as far as I'm aware, that is all I really needed to do for the fuel lines themselves. And just so you guys know, I have about maybe two feet extra coming out of where the hard stock lines actually came up into the engine bay. Um, we'll be using those to uh, actually connect to the fuel filter. And hopefully we actually gave ourselves just enough to where um, we should have maybe a couple inches extra and we'll just trim them up to fit, make sure they're all nice and tight. Everything will get locked down here eventually. Um, but yeah, I'll be getting to the fuel tank here soon. So I'll see you guys when I'm doing the fuel tank. All right, guys, as you can see, we got the fuel tank in. I know I didn't get to film the process, but I didn't want the camera to be in the way. We're kind of using limited space here, but, um, so the straps came up, they both go right about here. And then there's a bolt that holds the fuel tank itself on right here. The straps obviously go that way. And the only thing that we're going to have to change is there's a little holder for the fuel lines right up above the front passenger side of the fuel tank here. We may have to cut some tabs uh, just to be able to hold our rubber hoses in there. Um, but those will run once we get the fuel pump in. We'll uh, make sure that the fuel lines are all set, the fuel hoses. Um, we're going to get some of those self-tapper rubber grommets that hold these lines in. Um, I think that's going to be the easiest way to do this. Uh, but other than that, I think that's really all we need to do for the fuel system right now. And then we can uh, start focusing on the rear axle. Hopefully get that in, get these uh, mounting brackets aligned. Um, and then we can uh, start working our way forward. So big day today. We got the fuel tank in finally. Looks pretty good. The straps are in. I'm just going to torque them down. They don't actually have a torque spec as far as I know, but if they do, I'll make sure that I double check and go to that spec and I'll let you guys know what it is. Um, as far as the fuel cooler itself, the nuts that hold that on are 15 foot pounds. Um, but like I said, I'll probably do the same, maybe 20 for the fuel tank straps and they should be fine. I never had a problem with my fuel tank. So, um, but yeah, thanks for watching you guys and I'll catch you in the next one.